nice. Welcome to the channel guys, today we're going to install some lateral thrusters, but first, let's look what's inside the box. Now here is just a quick refresher on how the lateral thrusters work. The main thing you need to know is that when turning in reverse, the jet pump does not fully push the boat from the side. Because of this, there is not much force helping to steer the boat. The lateral thrusters redirect some of that jet pump power to the side, giving a similar effect than how a traditional boat with a rudder handles. For an in-depth look on how this works, you'll have to watch my good friend Captain Leon. He's got a great video explaining and demonstrating this in his lateral thruster testing facility, link down below. All right, let's get to installing those lateral thrusters now. Uh-oh. Now normally, you wouldn't be able to mix brands back here. If you wanted the lateral thrusters and low speed steering, you would also use Jeppo Pilot's thrust vectors. This boat already had Cobra Jet steering installed, so I contacted Jeff over at Cobra Jet and he was able to send me a part to make that fully compatible with the lateral thrusters. Right now, we have to take off the Mega Fang as it is not compatible with the lateral thrusters. First thing we need to do is release the spring from the fins. Just lift it up and swing it back. Underneath the nozzle is a 13 mm bolt. Make sure you don't lose the collar on the bolt when you remove it. The side stabilizers need two 10 mm wrenches to remove. Now that we've removed the mega fangs and the stabilizers, we have a clear area to mount the lateral thrusters. Now go ahead and grab a 14 millimeter socket. We're gonna have to remove the lower innermost bolt from the jet pump. Take a quick wire brush to the threads to remove any residual thread sealer. Make sure you grab the correct hanger for the side you are working on. There are port side and starboard side brackets. Although Jetbo Pilot gave you blue thread locker to use on the jet pump bolt, the Yamaha service manual actually calls for a Loctite 567. Permatex also makes the same thread sealer. This Loctite is not to hold the bolt in place, but rather keep corrosion from forming on the threads and prevent it from seizing. Now this part is a little out of order than what is described in the instruction manual, but by doing it this way, you'll be able to properly torque the bolt on the jet pump. Position this bracket as best you can to be flat. Set a torque wrench to about 13 foot-pounds and tighten it in. Now grab the rest of the hardware from the box. On top of the bolt, first place the lock washer, then the fender washer, and push it through the lateral thruster. Flipping it over to the other side, place another fender washer and the collar we removed from the bottom of the nozzle. Now grab the blue Loctite from the box and put it on these threads. We do not want this bolt coming out. Take note of the notch on the lateral thruster. And this ridge on the bottom of the jet pump. Carefully place the lateral thruster into the bottom of the nozzle, lining up the ridge and the notch. Use a 5 mm Allen key to loosely tighten the screw. Take the last, longer bolt, place a washer on it, and push it through the top of the lateral thruster. 
wedge the plastic spacer in between the thruster and the bracket from the jet pump. Finally, add the last washer and finger tighten the lock nut. Take a 5mm Allen key to the top of the bolt and a 10mm wrench to the lock nut. Tighten this loosely. Double check that everything is still lined up and straight. Now go back and torque that bolt under the nozzle to 10 foot-pounds. Finish off the bracket bolt by tightening the lock nut to show two threads from the bolt. Okay, if we take our nozzle and move it side to side and flip the fins up and down, we see that there is no binding going on here. This is tightly mounted and not going anywhere. So the next thing we're going to have to do is mount the side four stabilizers. Jeff from Cobra Jet Steering gave us all the hardware we needed, including the quarter inch drill bit to make the holes. Line up the center notch with the ridge on the nozzle with the side four stabilizer. It's going to get mounted right about here. Make sure these wings on the side are facing the back. While holding the stabilizer in place, move the fins up and down a few times to make sure that it is not rubbing. Use a sharpie to mark the holes where we need to drill. I used a rubber band to help hold the fins up and out of the way. Next, take a center punch to indent the center of our marked spots. This will make sure our drill bit does not drift. Use the included quarter inch drill bit to drill the holes. Take the screw and secure it from the other side with the lock nut. Use a 4mm Allen key on the bolt and hand tighten the lock nut with a 10mm wrench. For the last step, we're going to put the spring back into place. Rotate it clockwise so that it catches the back of the fin and then spin it around so it hooks the front. Now if you lift the fins, they should move up and down without any scraping and if you push the nozzle from side to side, you can also check that there is no rubbing. Looks like we're good to go. I'm going to go do the same exact thing on the other side and then go test it out. Alright, we're out on the open water and we have our stationary buoy here as a reference point. I've taken the steering wheel, locked it to one side, and pulled the throttle handles back to the first notch to lower the buckets for reverse. As the boat begins to move in reverse, you can see the water actually pushing out from the side. Look how tight we are able to make these turns in reverse. I love it! This is going to make it so much easier coming back to the dock. If you have one of these earlier model boats, I highly recommend putting this in. Don't worry about which fins you have as it should work with both brands. If you have the Cobra Jet steering fins, contact Jeff at the email down below and he should be able to help you with the right parts you'll need to make it compatible. You wouldn't necessarily have to change out your entire fin system to make this work. Putting these in was a fairly easy job to do. I'm confident that you guys can install these without any difficulty. All right, everyone, that wraps up the lateral thruster install. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if there's anything else that you want to see. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you all on the water.